Tēnā tua wahine e whai ake nei, multimedia storyteller, activist, founder and creator of Nuku Women, the incredible Kiani Matata Sipu. Kia ora, kia ora, kia ora. Oh, I hate being in this position where you have to go after all of those incredible, amazing wahine who tell jokes and sing and make you harmonise and do all the things. And then I get up here and I made this slideshow in my lunch break today. <laughs> and I was like, I'm a multimedia producer and I have one photo to share with you this evening. <laughs> Kei te pai. The kōrero will be good. Uh, well, let's hope so. If not, just laugh and clap for me anyway, okay? Uh, Ka uru atu tainui i rotu i te manukau, engari i reira te tanifa kaiwhare, i reira te tupuna hape e tatari ana. Ka kite atu rāua ki ngā maunga o nehe ko ōtua taua, ko maunga taketake, ko waitomokia. Ka piki aku ake tōku maunga ko te puke tāpapatanga a hape. Ko ōrua rangi te awa kei reira e tū te whare tupuna tāma ki makaurau, kei makaurau marae, Ah, no ihu mātau a hau, tūturu, kia ora. <laughs> ah, ko kiane matatasi putoku ingoa, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, I, <laughs> the kaupapa of tonight was, was reflection, and I was like, I am so bad at reflection. I'm one of those wahine Māori that Miriama talks about that is incredibly busy and just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and, goes and then forgets to turn around and have a look and see what happened. And so today, uh, this kaupapa has forced me to reflect and reflect a little bit, in particular over the last six years. The last six years of my life have been the most incredibly difficult, horrible, traumatic, painful years of my life, while at the exact same time have been the most incredible, wonderful, exciting, amazing, fulfilling years of my life. Uh, I realized really early on in my life that my purpose is to amplify the voices of marginalized people and their communities so that we can change the narrative for our future generations. That's my kaupapa. That's what I do. And it's all about mana motuhake. Uh, for the last 16 years, I've been a journalist and have been working for a number of different magazines and, and websites. Is that what we call them? Um, <laughs> as I look at someone. <laughs> um, I, with my five cousins, co-led the reclamation of our whenua and ihu mātau. Uh, and over the last three years, interviewed 100 kick-ass indigenous wahine for the Nuku movement. Kia ora. Uh, that was a podcast series and is now a self-published book. Um, and so, as I reflected on those last few years, oh, kia ora, mum, there you are. <laughs> I was trying to find you from the side. Um, as I reflected on the last few years, I thought, what are the things that I've really held on to? A little bit of ahua lessons, um, but those things that really kept me going over those last few years. And even though this is only one for Kahua, this is my pepe, this is my kōtiro, these are herringa. She stands at the, uh, the base of our maunga, Puketa Papa, and she holds a kawakawa in her hands. And those kawakawa represent the intergenerational healing that I am creating for our whanau. So number one, you must know who you are because it is in this knowledge that you become fearless. I know that I fuck up to volcanoes, so my temper explodes. <laughs> I also know that to calm me down, just like a volcano, you need some water. And so when I need healing, I go straight to Hine Moana. I know that I am a descendant of gods. I am atua given and I am tupuna driven. I fuck up to Wainui, to Papatuanuku, to Hine Te Iwa Iwa, to Hine Moana, to Mahuika most days. <laughs> and in that knowing, I know that nothing is impossible. I know that I'm powerful, I know that I am strong, because those are my tupuna. I am atua driven, I am tupuna driven, aroha mai. I'm tupuna driven, and tupuna driven is that feeling you get. Tupuna driven is not leading with your hinengaro, it's leading with your ake, those guts right inside you. 
I remember my grandfather told me, if it feels right, it's right. And if it feels wrong, it's wrong. And I later came to realize that that feeling is your tupuna talking to you. It's your tupuna guiding you. And if it feels wrong, you're going down the wrong pathway. And if it feels right, then there's greatness at the other end. Number two, he te mea nui o te ao. Most people will say he tangata. Engari ki oku nei whakaro, e hara te tangata. It is not people that are the greatest thing in this world. It is whenua. Because whenua sustains us. We come from whenua. We go back to whenua. And in our lifetime, it is our job to tiaki te whenua. Because the whenua looks after us. A few years ago, I interviewed the incredible Auntie Puolani case from Mauna Kea. And she said something profound to me that I have never forgotten and I will never forget. When you stand on a sacred mountain, you must have sacred conduct. And when you think about whenua, we sometimes think about sacredness only belonging to our tūpuna maunga or to our tūpuna awa. But actually all the whenua that we stand on, that this building sits on, is sacred. So what does sacred conduct look like? How do we stand? What do we stand for? How do we know that it's time to stand? Over the last few years, we've flocked a little bit of criticism uh, for the mahi that we've done to Tiaki Whenua. But there's this drive within us as wahine that I knew it was never my decision, it was never my whanau or my cousin's decisions to stand and protect Ihumato. It was the whenua calling us and reminding us that without that whenua, we don't live and we can't live. And so I want us to remember that kia ha te mea nui o e hara mato, e hara tato, it's not us, it's the whenua. Indigenous knowledge is the blueprint for living well. Now this was my last minute addition into my korero today because this morning in class, I'm studying uh, Rumaki Reo with Chelsea, her and I are in the same class, and kia ora. <laughs> and this morning, uh, there was a korero that happened in class that sparked another discussion around hapu tanga. Now, I am a mama of two tamariki. One of my tamariki is here in Te Ao Marama, and one of my tamariki is with Hine Nui Te Pō, or one of my tamaiti. And last year, when we lost our baby, I referred to a, or reflected on a whakatauki that is one I keep close to me all the time. And it's really simple. Kamua, kamuri. In order to move forward, you must look back. And so when we lost this baby, and it took 14 years to get the first baby, and it took another four years, three years, to get the second baby, I thought a lot about what it meant, what haputanga meant and what grieving for a baby meant and what did that look like for us in our whanau. And so that week that we lost our pepe, we named him. My daughter's name is Hayata Te Kapua. Her name connects to a story, Kaputa Mai Te Hayata ki ngā kapua pauri. She was the baby born after we lost our grandmother. My son's name is Te Hiaroa. He tino roa te wā ke te hia hia māua ko tōna pāpa ki aia. It'll be a really long time that we wish for that child to be with us. So we named him. We collected as much of him as we could, and we planted a tree at our whare, and we grew that tree to honour and remember him. We went to the moana, well, we picked some kawakawa first, and we went down to the moana, and we had a whakapuringa, my husband and I, together. And we cleansed and we let go of all of that grief and that hara and all of those things that were holding us down. And those feelings, that pauritanga that was keeping us down. And all of those practices are all indigenous practices that helped us to heal. And when you think about if that's just those practices for that one part of, that, of my life, what other practices can we look at, can we reflect on? What other pūrāko can we go back to to teach us how to live well, how to grieve well, how to be well? <clears throat> I've got two minutes left. <laughs> 
it's a good little clock down here. <laughs> the last thing that I reflected on in preparation for tonight was these three really simple words. You are enough. And over the last three years of interviewing 100 Kakas indigenous wahine, incredible woman, wahine Māori, wahine Pacifica, wahine Himalaya, wahine from Rekohu, Chatham Islands, wahine from Hawaii, the theme that ran through each of them, the confidence they all had, was the knowing of who they were, was the reconnection that they had to their indigenous practice, to their indigenous knowledge, it was the fact that they knew Papa Tuanuku, Wainui, Hinete Iwa Iwa, Mahuika were the source of all of the things that they knew to be. And that they were enough. And they knew they were enough. Exactly as they were. And exactly as you all are. The kaupapa behind Nuku is be who you are, not who you've been told to be. And I think in the society that we live in today, we're told that we are so many different things. We're elitist, or we're plastic, or we live in a low socioeconomic community, and so we're not good enough. I was born and raised in Mangere. Look at me, I'm standing on a stage. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's a reminder that you, exactly as you are right now, are enough. And when you start with these things, you are whole, and you can move forward into te ho, feeling incredibly great about yourself. I want to finish my kōrero, chair 34 seconds, I did good. I want to finish my kōrero, kia reihua, um, with a shameless self-promotion. <laughs> actually, I want to finish my kōrero with something inside the puka puka, but actually, I do want to say, Nuku is a self-published book. It's a defiant act of mana motuhake. It was made by wahine. It was led by wahine. And it is 100% about wahine. It was the only self-published book in the finalists for the Ockham New Zealand Book Awards. I will brag about that until the next one. <laughs> but I want to read to you the dedication that I wrote for my kōtero, because actually it's for every wahine. For Hayata Te Kapua, you are a descendant of Atua Wahine. Listen and look for the tohu of your tūpuna, for they will guide you. Mould your foundation from mātauranga taketake and harness strength from your whakapapa. In every endeavour, always strive for mana motuhake. Indigenous wahine are world leaders, world dreamers, world makers, and world changers. Don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. Kia ora.